Hey, what's up? I'm Jay Moss, and today we're going to talk about miking acoustic guitar. We're going to use three different techniques. We're going to do one XY stereo pair, one mono large diaphragm condenser, and if you're on a budget, we're going to do one SM57 because everybody has one of those kicking around. Let's dig in. All right, first up is the XY pair. We're going to orient these in a vertical position, and the reason we're going to do that is because one of the capsules is going to face a little bit more up at the low strings, and one of the capsules is going to face a little bit more down at the high strings. What this does, I guess you could think of it kind of like a piano, it's going to spread the frequencies across the stereo field, and it'll feel like really immersive. You want to be kind of careful with your mic position, as always. One thing with recording acoustic guitar is that the player has a tendency to move around, so you're going to want to do less of that than normal, and I like to start around the 12th fret. If you come closer to the sound hole, you'll get more bass, and further away, you'll get less. Usually the 12th fret is a really good middle point. Let's play some guitar. <laughs> Okay, now let's move on to the single large diaphragm condenser. This is obviously a much more simple setup, and it has this really awesome, like, intimate sound. Um, I like to put this kind of in the same position. It might have just a little bit more distance. The reason for that is because when we're coming in with the two capsules on the XY, I really want that stereo field to be, like, well represented. And as we come closer into our source with multiple microphones, the more of a wider stereo image that we get. Whereas we just have one microphone here, we can be just a little bit more lenient. Uh, so I completely didn't rehearse what I'm going to play in any of this stuff. I'm going to use some of the same chords, but uh, it's not going to be identical, that's for sure. And uh, let's uh, hear what it sounds like. All right, last and actually maybe least, uh, we're gonna use the Shure SM57. Go to any pawn shop, buy a used one. This is your budget option, but I bet we can make it sound really, really good. The positioning is gonna be really similar to the large diaphragm condenser, both in terms of space from the neck and where on the neck it is. So we'll play one more thing and uh, let's make it sound sweet. All right, we've got our three performances here. Our XY is red, our large diaphragm condenser is blue, and our SM57, the classic uh, dynamic mic, is yellow. Uh, let's listen to all of these and kind of just get a better feel for how they sound, and then let's talk about maybe some things we could do to correct them. We're not gonna go deep into effects and all that stuff because the fact of the matter is um, how you ultimately uh, treat your acoustic guitars is going to really depend on the composition. So, but what we want to do is get a better understanding of what these techniques do, what these techniques sound like, what they might be good for, and look for any potential um, general EQ things we could correct. So, this is our large di. I'm sorry, this is our XY first, and um, I'm a big fan of this one. Pretty cool. Um, how awesome is it to have that stereo field? One thing, whenever multi-miking, people hear me wax on about this forever, you absolutely have to make sure you got right is your phase. And in this case, we did. XYs are really, really easy to tell because if an XY is out of phase, that is to say one of the polarities of one of the sides was flipped, you would know in a hurry. It would be really, really thin, um, but we can quickly tell that this is in phase. And all that means is that our waveforms are moving in the same direction at the same time. If one of the polarities of one of the microphones was flipped, instead of seeing this peak right here go up, as this one goes up, you would see the inverse. One would go up and then one would go down and it would sound really hollow and really thin, no good. So I like that one a lot. The phase is good. 
I like that little bit of stereo separation. That's particularly good for when you have a singer songwriter, you're not going to be multi-tracking. Um, there isn't necessarily going to be a much accompaniment. It can be good with accompaniment too, but I really like this XY when you're using it um, as a single acoustic take. Now the large diaphragm condenser, Man, that's a really nice starting sound. This feels way more direct and intimate, like I said. It doesn't have the stereo separation, um, and this is very just down the middle. Um, it's, it's more direct, it's more intimate, um, and it, that microphone just sounds really, really great. All right, this is the one I'm really curious about. This is our 57. Let's check this out. Man, how good is that? We took a $89 mic and we put it in the right position on the guitar and just did a couple things correctly and it's so usable. It sounds really good. Okay, so now let's just do a couple EQ moves. I'm gonna pull up Pro Q3 by Fab Filter. Uh, I love it because it is very visual. So all of the things that I'm talking about, uh, you'll sort of be able to see. Okay, I see a couple of things I wanna work on. Acoustic guitars are so harmonically complex, and that is to say the difference between the peak values and the average values of the acoustic guitar in terms of frequency response is usually pretty high. So probably on all of these guitars, using Soothe just a little bit to bury those peaks down into the average volume is gonna serve us really well. Let's start by making this pretty sharp and hitting play. Yeah, that takes that bite off. Let's bypass real quick. And Soothe is such a good option for this because um, as the notes change, the harmonics are gonna change and this takes care of all of that for you. Now, let's go back to our EQ. I'm gonna add a little bit of body. I would much rather have a balanced signal like this one where I can add some body if I want to rather than having something that comes with too much bass to begin with. Acoustic guitars are notoriously boomy and for that reason, get the most balanced signal you possibly can and then work from there. I kind of think that's all that one needs. A little bit of harmonic reduction and just a little bit of low end. You know, like I said, it's really hard to know exactly what to do um, until we hear a whole mix or until we hear the singer's voice, that type of thing. So for now, what we're gonna do is just sort of look and see what the differences are. Um, there might not be that many, honestly, um, but we wanna just take a look and familiarize ourselves with these three different sounds. Once again, we're gonna bring up Pro Q3. Same deal here. This one has some harmonic peaks in a different area. They're actually more towards 1K, whereas the stereo pair had them a little bit higher up. Same thing though, we're gonna use Soothe once again, increase our sharpness. And this time we're gonna lower where we're looking for harmonics a little bit because I saw and heard that they were more in like the one to 2K area as opposed to this upper area. Sounds good, doesn't need much. And lastly, our $89 wonder. This one's definitely more mid-rangey, that's to be expected. I think I'm hearing something about here. Dynamics do have a tendency to get like more buildup in the boxier sort of frequency areas. And boxy usually sort of means down in the low mid range. So here, we're gonna take a listen. We're gonna make a small general correction. 
And a lot of times when I make a correction or I reduce somewhere, I also like to sort of increase somewhere just south of that. This sort of inverse curve here um, will add the body that this low mid-range cut sort of takes away. That's nice. I think I'm gonna double dip down there. And I'm also gonna use Soothe one more time. If you're not sensing a theme yet, we're gonna go way south this time, down in the low mid range. That sounds pretty good. Let's leave that high end nice and open because it's a dynamic, it doesn't have as much high end to begin with. Man, not bad. All right, last thing I'm gonna do, I said I wasn't gonna do it, but let's do it. Let's just add a little bit of room effect. Uh, I like uh, the Lexicon package quite a bit. The plate is good, but for this vibe, we're gonna go with a little bit of Lexicon room. I'm gonna call this send, Lex room. And I think it might just be fun to hear some of this with a little bit of effect attached. Here we go, Lexicon room. Let's hear this. Sounds super, super good. Awesome. Let's hear the large diaphragm condenser. Add a little bit of that same room. Oh, I got one more thing I want to do to this one. We're going to use stage one. This is a great plugin, and we're going to use the mono spread uh, just to move this out to the sides a little bit. This is probably the best widener. Uh, I've ever used. Okay, watch as I move this mono spread uh, up a little bit. Uh, we get this really nice stereo feel. And this can be good. If you don't want to set up an XY, you still want to have some stereo things going on, you won't get the frequency spread in the exact same way. But this is a really quick and awesome way to take a mono signal and just move some cool stuff out to the sides and make it a little bit deeper and more interesting. That sounds great. And the same thing would apply to the dynamic. It's a mono, so if you wanted to use that stereo spreader, you totally could. But real quick, we're just gonna toss on Lex Room. We are going to play this back and... Man, I almost love this 57 more than I like the large diaphragm condenser. This comes at like a 10th of the price. This one's warmer in a way that I really like. The large diaphragm condenser, is of course very airy uh, and, and full bodied in a way, but this has got more like low mid-range density and I kind of like that. It's going to depend on the application though. So you got to choose wisely and experiment a little bit, but use these tips, try this stuff out and I think you'll have quite a bit of success.